Okay, so we have another exciting tutorial today in Blender 4.0. I'm gonna be showing you guys step-by-step step how to make some horns in a Blender, as you can see here. Um, it's pretty stylized, but yet it is a ton of fun. I can see you using this in all sorts of things, um, like dragons, uh, mythical creatures, maybe some existing creatures. And I'll even show you how to quickly make a kind of like rough ox head here, just to put it on for display purposes. But really the focus here is doing the actual horns. So if you guys wanna learn how to do this, keep watching and uh, we'll make some fun horns in Blender using mostly a few modifiers. There's a very small amount of modeling that goes on here. And as always, I'm gonna be uploading my final result to Patreon. All of that's in the description below. So with a new scene open up in Blender, let's go ahead, select all the default objects, press delete, and we're gonna go shift A and let's go to our mesh options, add in a circle. And then we're just gonna to go to our top of graphic view and we're gonna go into edit mode. And let's just go ahead and enable X-ray. And let's just go ahead up here and enable the X symmetry, so over here. And with proportional editing enabled, so make sure this little uh, tab here is blue. You're gonna select this vertex over here and you go G and just bring it out a bit. And then grab one here on the side and then just kind of pull it out a little bit and then just kind of flatten it towards the bottom. So a shape that looks kind of like this to get started with. And then you're gonna turn off proportional editing. And you're gonna press A to select everything and go E to extrude and Z, extrude down. S to scale a little bit. And then let's just select this top edge and go E to extrude and Z. Go up about this much. And then let's go E to extrude, S to scale, maybe G to move it up, just like this. And then E to extrude, S to scale and yeah, let's just leave it at that. And let's just grab this bottom edge here and go E to extrude as the scale. And we're just gonna hover over one of these edges, Control R, till you see the loop option here, left click once and just slide up. Come to about here and then left click again and then just go S to scale. And now we've got a shape that looks like this. So we can now tab out. Let's go to our modifiers. Let's go add modifier. Let's go search and type in array. Let's just click on the array modifier and let's make the X factor zero. And let's make the Z component uh, one, like so. Or maybe I think we can go probably something like 0.9. So they kind of embed in each other a little bit. And we're gonna come here to the count and give it a count of 17, like so. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna go Shift A. We're gonna go to our curve options, add in a Bezier curve. And you can see the curve is, um, if you go into wireframe, you can see it's right here. But let's actually grab our horn segments here and go S to scale them down till they're more or less the kind of the length of our curve over here. So about this big. Then let's select our curve and go into edit mode. Let's press A to select all the points here and go S, Y, zero to flatten it. And then in our front orthographic view, um, I think we're just gonna turn off the, the um, circle here for now, just the horns so we can't see them. And we want to just grab these handles and go G to move them. And then R to rotate them so they're kind of up straight. Just quickly go back into object mode and under your overlays, just make sure origins is enabled. And then go back into edit mode. You can see we have the origin point here in the center. We're just going to go G until the bottom handle is sitting right on that origin point like so. So I'm going to select the bottom handle and go S to scale it a little bit. Then grab the top handle and go S to scale that for now. So now we just have our Bezier curve here and the origin point is sitting at the bottom. So we're gonna go into object mode again. Let's enable our circle again and let's grab it. I'm gonna scale it up just a little bit more and let's go over to our add modifier and search and let's type in curve. Let's get a curve modifier and let's click on eyedropper and let's just select that Bezier curve. So I'm just gonna come up here and click on it and it's to come here to the deform axis and I think it's gonna be Z. It's gonna be our axis. If that doesn't work for you, just try out some different ones, but for me it's Z. And then we're just gonna grab our Bezier curve up here in the scene collection. Let's go into edit mode and let's just select this top um, vertex over here and go Alt S and just scale it in with Alt S like so. And then in our front orthographic, we're just gonna go G and move this and go R to rotate it, to bend it. G to move it down. And what we might have to do is just press A to select all of this, right click and go subdivide just to create another handle. And let's just grab this middle handle, move it up, 
So something like this. And then let's grab this bottom handle and go Alt S and scale it up. And then in our top view, we're just gonna grab this handle here at the tip and kind of bring it in and R to rotate it. Just so we have a shape that looks like this. So you can make it however you want, but I'm just gonna go something like this. Then I'm gonna go back into object mode. Let's grab our horns here, right click and go shade smooth. And then you can go into edit mode whenever you want and you can always edit this to make it look exactly how you want. Uh, by adding in some more loops, kind of messing around with the shape a bit. But more or less, this is kind of what I'm going with, something like this. But now what we can do is we can go shift A, we can add in a empty, let's go for a cube. Let's scale that down a bit and let's select the Bezier curve and the circle. And holding in shift, let's select the empty and go control P and go object key transform. So now we grab this empty and we go G to move it. And we go R to rotate, you can see that all goes along. And now we'd like to mirror this. So let's grab this empty here. Let's just move it over to the side, go R to rotate it. Then let's grab the horn and go over to our modifiers. Let's go add modifier and type in mirror, get a mirror modifier and let's go shift A and add into our scene here another empty, S to scale it down a bit. Then grab our horn again and now go to that mirror, click on the eyedropper and select a new empty. And now it's mirroring the way we want it to. So now all you have to do is grab the original empty you can go to your top view if it helps, rotate it a bit, bring it in. And you can always grab the actual horn and press R and then double tap Z. So it rotates around the local Z. And then you can rotate this to kind of adjust the shape of the horn like so. But that's what I'm gonna be going with for now. I think that looks pretty good. Now let's quickly go Shift A, just go to our mesh options, quickly add in a UV sphere. S to scale that down, G to bring it down a bit. And then in our right orthographic view, let's just go into edit mode. And I'm gonna go R to rotate this and then just with proportional editing, let's enable the X axis and let's grab some of this bottom topology, G to move it up. Let's grab a front vertex, move it forward a bit. And then in our front view, um, I'm just gonna roughly shape this to be kind of like a cattle kind of shape. So just bringing this in here, um, maybe just bringing this forward and down a bit and the back of the head. So just a very rough shape like this. And then to make it look even cooler, I'm just gonna quickly go into object mode again. And with this, quickly go into the sculpting workspace, which I already am in. Go to object and then go into sculpt mode. Then go over to your active um, workspace properties here and then go down, enable dynamic topology, go okay. And I'm gonna set the detail size to five. And then I'm just gonna come in here and just paint with my clay strips brush over here. I'm just gonna come around and just add kind of like a bead going around here like this. And then to the front here, I'm just gonna come and kind of make what looks like nostrils, kind of an upper lip, kind of like a lower lip. This isn't really the main focus of the tutorial. So I'm just kind of just roughly adding just a little bit of bulk in some places like this and maybe a few strips down here, something like that. And then just holding in shift and just smoothing that all in. So the idea here really is just the horns. Um, you can add this to whatever creature you want, um, but I'm just doing this just for you guys to have something to display your horns on while we're doing the tutorial. So something like that looks okay. I'm gonna go back into my layout here and let's grab, um, and let's go into our front view, shift A, let's add in a camera. I'm gonna move it back. And then in camera view, I'm just gonna rotate this around the X axis, kind of move it from an up view like so. And at any point you can adjust these horns as much as you want. You can still grab the Bezier curve and edit it like so, but it's you know pretty forgiving. But now we have this. So now let's make it look really cool with some materials. So let's go into cycles. So going to our render properties, we're gonna go make the cycles. Let's set our max samples to something like 70. And let's go shift A, let's add in an area light. Give it a strength of 400. I'm gonna bring mine up, scale it on the X and then just bring it. So it's just behind the horns here. And then press Z, go into rendered view. And then you can duplicate your light by going shift D, having one coming from the side, and then maybe having one coming from this side over here. 
and maybe one more kind of coming from the front over here like this. So now let's grab our actual horn and let's go to our materials properties. Let's go new and create a material called horn. And we'll work on that more in a bit, but let's also select the head and just go create a new material for that. And let's just kind of make it kind of like a brown ox kind of color, like so. And let's just go to our particles, click new, give it some hair. Let's bring the length down to 0.1. And let's go down to our children, make it interpolated. And under the number up here, under the emission, I'd go with 500. And then go to render and make it B-spline under the path. Then going down to the children, let's just take the roughness here and let's just give it an ununiform and an endpoint value. And then under the clumping, let's just give that a bit of a clump value as well. And if you wanted to optionally, you could go into particle paint and just kind of like paint this a little bit and change the direction of the hair particles. Um, but that's all extra stuff you can do. I'm just kind of doing it like this. Just very simple and then going back into object mode. So now we have kind of like a rough quick and dirty ox, but the main focus here is the horn. So let's select the horns. Let's go to modifiers, add modifier and let's go sub, get a subdivision surface. And now let's go over to our shading workspace. And with our horns here, we're gonna go in to our rendered mode over here and we have that horn material. Let's go shift a search and get a noise texture. Plug the color into the base color. Then we're gonna go shift a search and get a color ramp. Place it over here and then bring this value up here. Let's make that kind of like a dark brown. Bring this one down and kind of make it kind of like a creamish color. And then we're gonna come here to the detail, bring it all the way up and the roughness as well. And then let's move these two shaders side shift a search get another color ramp plug the color into the factor then plug the color into the normal shift a search and let's get a bump plug grab the bump here and put it on the cable but make sure the ramp is going into the height and then let's bring the strength down and now to add one more cool touch to this we can go shift a search and get a geometry and let's go shift a search and get a color ramp. Let's plug the pointiness into the factor. Let's just plug the color into the surface for now. And now if you drag these two values together, we can kind of create this pointiness effect where we have um, like the edges being white and the inside being a little bit darker. So we're just gonna slide these values till we get it just right. And then we go shift a search and get a mix. Let's go to mix color and let's place that from this cable coming out of the color ramp at the bottom, put it over here and then plug this color into the B input here. And now let's just take the um, principal BD BSDF and plug it back into the surface. And now these guys are mixing, but what we're gonna do, we're gonna come here to the mix type and make it overlay. And then just bring the factor up here a little bit. And now we've got this nice, really cool looking horn material. So now let's make sure to save and let's go back to our layout and let's quickly go render and give this a little render. So click on render image. And here we have our render. So you can spend as much time as you want getting this look really cool, but this is a really fun way of making some horns in Blender 4.0. So um, I will be putting my original over here on Patreon. It's the exact same thing I just showed you guys. I just obviously spent a little bit more time just sussing out the look and the materials but it's the exact same technique. So if this has been handy, I hope you're able to use it. I know I went a little bit quick there, but you know, it's just what a tutorial is. And I'll see you guys next time for another one.